Hi, my name is Jim Stanesco with AFC International, and this is going to be a real quick how-to video on the startup and functioning, uh, basic functioning of the Ray Systems Micro Ray. Micro Ray has two buttons, as you can see here on the front. Sensors are up here, one, two, three, and four. It is a diffusion unit only, meaning there is no sample pump, and there is no attachable motorized sample pump for it at this moment, at the time. So right now it's a personal monitor, and if you did want to do some monitoring down in a pit or down below grade and confined space, you're going to have to definitely use a rope and extend your reach or if you need to go upward put on a pole and, and extend your reach that way um, but anyway the diffusion sensors are right here one two three four and it'll take care of it it can be ordered in any different types of combinations uh, of one, two three and four uh, HCN is the fifth sensor that can be uh, ordered in in place of H2S or CO um, so uh, you do have that option so for the fire service uh, LELO2 HCN and carbon monoxide is a real good combination for the toxic twins okay instrument has the two buttons as I mentioned you have the uh, yes plus key and the on off key and we know that is the mode key at Ray systems horn is right here so this is where you're going to hear that loud horn. So it is very, very ear piercing as you'll hear. Uh, to turn the unit on, you're going to hold and press the, the mode key or the on off key and hold it down. And as soon as you hear the horn and the lights go off, you can release and you can see it goes through a warm phase. And it's giving you a self test screen and it counts down a little bit. It's like 8,000, 7,000, 6,000. That's just counting up, I guess. But it does give you some information. It says self-test passed. So it is checking diagnostics. Gives you the version of the firmware and the serial number of the instrument. It gives you the installed sensors. It lets you know what sensors are installed. And then it will count down from right around 40. Um, and it says warm up. At this point, you're just going to have to be patient and let it do its thing while we're waiting for it to warm up I'll show the back side you'll see an alligator clip your traditional alligator clip for clipping on to your clothing or straps you do have a d-ring right here um, you do have the approval warning label on the back side here and your charging contacts are down here below the instrument at the bottom of the instrument okay now um, just like traditional race systems fashion, you can configure the instrument to give you a fresh air calibrate question right off the beginning. And it says fresh air cal, uh, air cal question mark. You don't have to have that programmed in, but since this is my unit, I like it that way. So at this point, you should be asking yourself, well, am I in a fresh air environment? If the answer is yes and you feel confident that you are, you can go ahead and say yes and hit the yes key. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. At that point, it will count down from 30, and at the end of 30, it's going to zero all the sensors out and make the oxygen sensor 20.9. If, though, you have a situation where you're not sure of your background, um, or you know it's bad, then you, you don't want to do that, because if we zero out a positive number, the instrument certainly will do that, and then now when you actually seek and find fresh air, you will get a negative reading. Typically, you'll see that on your carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is very hard to detect. You don't know if there's carbon monoxide in the environment or not. You take a positive, you, you make it zero. Then when you go outside fresh air or upwind from a vehicle, you all of a sudden will see a negative number. That's a good indication that you had zeroed in a contaminated area. Not a big deal, but when you see negatives, and again, most of the time you'll see it on the carbon monoxide sensor, that's probably what took place. You have a little bit of background carbon monoxide. Okay, after the fresh air, it says pass, 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 pass on all the sensors. You're just gonna hit the yes key to acknowledge that. Now at this point, you're ready to go. You're actually ready to go do some work. Now I'm going to go ahead and reach a pointer here so I can kind of show you a few things. On the instrument itself, you can hit the on-off key and it shows you the peaks. Peaks are the highest reading that the sensors have seen since it's been turned on. I hit it again, I'm going to see my minimums. Minimums are basically for the oxygen. If we did drop this down into a pit, we couldn't see the instrument, we heard it go off. You bring it back up, 
conditions come back to normal, you can hit that that button, the on off or mode key and mode over to this minimum screen to see how low we went to. You hit the button again, short term exposure limits or your STELs. Short term exposure limits at this point show dashes along the screen and it's only for the, the toxic gas sensors, right? What's the definition of a, of a STEL? It's the highest 15 minute time period. Well, we haven't been on for 15 minutes. Once this unit goes for 15 minutes, those numbers or those dashes will turn into numbers. Time weighted average is the next screen. This is going to be a dose over time. As we wear this unit, it's going to basically give us some information as how much we've been exposed to over time. And that's going to be for the toxics once again. Hit the button again. You'll see May 18th, 2017. It's going to give you the date and time. Time is the next button. Button push. If you have a wireless equipped unit, you're going to see the ID, ID of the instrument. It's an alphanumeric ID specific for this instrument that can be changed through the software. And then a PAN ID. A PAN ID is another number that we use to differentiate different instruments on different networks or different work groups when we're using wireless. If I don't want to see other people's devices and another work group, I could change the PAN ID to a specific number just for my guys and not see the surrounding uh, other work crews that also have wireless units. Or I could actually keep it all the same if I was joining a Mabus, a mutual aid type setup with a fire department and I want to see other departments gas meters coming to the an incident, then I could keep it all the same. The next screen when I push the button, the uh, on off button is the indicator of what the instrument is calibrated to and the correction factor more importantly that the sensor LEL sensor is corrected to. And you can see it's set up for methane. This means our, our Tech Note 156 correction factor is valid when we see methane and a correction factor of 1. CalGas is methane as well so I can actually see what, instru what this instrument has been calibrated to. And then the last screen is your comms mode or com communications mode. It says communication mode question mark. At this point, I could say yes and actually hook this unit up through a cable that comes with it. It's a USB cable, micro USB, and uh, use the software to drop the data logger or configure the instrument. When I hit one more time or just simply wait about 30 seconds, it will come back to the main screen. And the main screen again is your four gas readings carbon monoxide, LEL, H2S, and oxygen. Upper left hand corner is a battery icon. As it gets darker, or actually as it lightens up like a gas gauge, you can see how much of your battery is left over. Next to that is your Bluetooth symbol. If your Bluetooth is enabled, you'll see a check mark next to the Bluetooth. That just tells me that. All the criteria, in other words, that I've programmed into the instrument have been met. Criteria such as bump test daily, bump test weekly, calibrate daily, calibrate weekly, calibrate monthly. I can actually set up a schedule and if all the parameters are taken care of when you turn this unit on, you'll get a check mark. If the check mark's not there, that means that you need to do a bump or a cal or both. So that is something that's kind of unique. Uh, we can actually set it up so that if we see that check mark, we know that that unit has met the specific criteria for a particular company uh, uh, guidance or um, criteria that we have to meet. Next to that is our wireless antenna. You'll see a little thing like a coat hanger or a martini glass. That means our wireless radio is enabled. That would be the 900 megahertz. And next to that is the GPS, a little satellite icon saying the GPS is actually working. And then next to that, you have a little like disk, like a floppy disk, which is showing you that the data logger, internal data logger, is engaged and is logging. Um, it is a, set up as a wrapping around data logger, so as you're using the unit, eventually it will wrap around on itself. Now the default setting is uh, one minute intervals, so every minute it will put into data, into the memory, um, all four gas sensors, and that will last up to about six months of continuous operation. So after about six months of continuous operation or using it, it will then wrap around and cut in on itself, kind of like a black box flight recorder on an airplane. So um, it's always going to be there, always going to be logging for you. So that's a very nice feature. 
other than that, it, it's really pretty simple. That's all there is to it. On off button, uh, yes plus key. Yes plus key is going to be used for making decisions. So if I go to the peak and I hit the yes key, it'll say clear peaks and minimums. I can hit that yes key to say yes and those peaks and minimums are cleared. I can then scroll all the way around to the beginning and see my gas readings. To shut the unit off, you're going to push and hold the mode key or on off key. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, <laughs> five, five beeps, and then it, you can release and it shuts off. So you don't accidentally just tap it and shut the unit off, it does go off. Um, you'll also notice, I don't know if you did notice on the video, a little green blip. It's kind of like a heartbeat of the instrument. It means that the instrument is alive and actually working. So again, Microray from Ray Systems, very, very simple. I just wanted to do a real quick video on it. Um, again, there's no access to the battery. I think I told this on another video. To get to the battery, which you would never have to do, but it's going to be through the four screws and, and probably open the unit and get to it. So it's not uh, one of those types of instruments where you can change out batteries. Um, if you need more time, you can get uh, vehicle chargers and vehicle uh, battery uh, components. Um, but it's designed to be used, um, and then if you need another unit, you get another unit. Jim Sinesco for AFC International. Hope this was of value to you, and if you have any questions, give us a call, 800-952-3293. Um, and again, um, we're here to help you. And if you have any questions on this, you want to demo, you want to see it, you want to ask some questions, give us a call. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.